Dr. Dilalar, welcome uh, on behalf of Shark Program. Uh, there is, uh, there are some news about the operation against ISIS uh, in the very near future, and there are lots of debates on this: who are going to take part the, the, uh, there, and also what will be the future of ISIS in the region, and also how the future of Iraq and Syria will be affected by all of these developments. Let's start with the operation towards Mosul and towards ISIS. How do you expect this operation will evolve, when it will start, and how it will evolve, how long will it take, and what will be the implications for the region? Well, the uh, liberation of Mosul uh, is a, a big milestone, it has uh, strategic as well as military um, importance, but importantly, it has political um, meaning to us. Uh, from the um, uh, war on ISIS point of view, this is a new chapter uh, from uh, putting Iraq back together and liberating the populations, the millions who have come under ICE control. That's a new era. But uh, from the evolution of events and power dynamics in the region, that's another milestone. We are looking at a new phase where uh, Iraq needs to uh, decide how to govern this uh, big part of its uh, territory as well as uh, population and uh, dealing with the factors that led to the emergence of ISIS and the loss of these territories. Uh, what we are witnessing is that there is an international engagement, regional power engagement as well as local actors all coming together with Mosul in, in mind but they are not communicating uh, properly, they are not sharing vision, they are not agreeing a framework that would clarify uh, the uh, stage or the phase after ISIS is defeated. Our worry is that too much focus has gone on to the military defeat, mm -hmm. but much less on the political, ideological and uh, social defeat. And this is where the challenge is. It has not been easy. There are too much uh, fragmentation at uh, all levels, top down and bottom up. Uh, therefore, um, the next phase requires everybody's uh, utmost focus uh, to get it right. In your assessment, you, you refer to the lack of the political understanding after the ISIS or how to deal aftershocks of the defeat of ISIS. In your assessment, what is who to blame or which actors should do more in terms of doing rebuilding the city, rebuilding the country, and in terms of having a shared vision for, for, for Iraq, for Syria, for Mosul specifically. What is lacking there? Local actors, do they too ambitious? Or the engagement of international actors, it's less limited? What, what, where is the problem? The expectation uh, is that Baghdad should play a major role in leading this process, in filling the vacuum that has been in place in uh, directing the local actors, uh, uh, embracing the Mosul population, Mosul leaders, uh, and coordinating efforts between Erbil, Baghdad, uh, as well as the regional and international powers. But unfortunately, Baghdad has not been able to focus uh, as much as we uh, wanted them to. And they have been weakened by the recent dynamic changes in politics. There is too much rivalry, the parliament is very polarized, the government is weakened by all these vacancies in these positions, and the current government uh, does not enjoy the backing of all the political parties. Uh, on top of that, the Iraqi army has been radically weakened um, by the last two years' um, problems, and uh, there are paramilitary forces emerging as real shakers and drivers for change. And of course, not all of these armed forces, whether they are national, uh, whether they are paramilitary, or whether they are popul a popular movement, or say the Hashd al-Watani and others from the Mosul tribes, and of course you have Peshmerga and the KRG uh, side. All of these are not necessarily coming under the same command and control and the Baghdad. So on the ground, you have too many uh, armed forces uh, that are polarized, fragmented, and not communicating. As soon as uh, Daesh is defeated in Mosul, there is this vacuum. Who is going to fill it, and how, and uh, what roadmap? This is where the danger is. And 
the uh, international uh, uh, allies, especially United States, who are uh, directly engaging uh, Iraqis, the Kurds, and as well as the regional powers, they have been able to bring people together to talk to some extent, but they have not been able to agree uh, an ultimate framework to force everyone through their leverages to uh, agree a pathway. So people look at America, people look at Baghdad, people look at Erbil, but they are not the, actor, not the only actors on the ground. And having this lack of consensus among different players, how, in your expectation, will evolve the developments after the defeat of ISIS in Mosul? So you know Mosul, you studied there. And then how will it affect the future of Iraq? Because we all know different actors have different visions for the future of the country. And it's not very easy to reconcile these different competing visions. In your assessment, do we have any chance after the defeat of ISIS to have a unified, federated Iraq? Or we are moving away from, from the current Iraq towards another type of state system in, to, in today's Iraq? The importance of liberating Mosul, uh, uh, another part of it, is that it will provide a model different from Fallujah and from Ramadi or Tikrit. Uh, it will be the final stage of getting rid of uh, ISIS from uh, territories that are now Iraqis. That doesn't mean ISIS problem will disappear, but we're talking about uh, a new model for A, the process of liberation, B, the stabilization that comes after that. Iraqi leaders must get this right. Otherwise, they would give, uh, or, uh, they would give yet another uh, reason for uh, radical forces to say, you see, uh, Iraq is not only dysfunctional, but it's not serious about stability, about prosperity and inclusiveness in Mosul. After the military defeat of Daesh, events may go in any one of many directions. One would be if everybody uh, exercise some uh, control over their um, forces and uh, adhere to the initial uh, top-level agreement. Therefore, only Iraqi security and police go into the city of Mosul, plus some orderly entrance of uh, the other uh, popular uh, mobilization units, which is Hasht al-Watani or the, the tribes. They are the Mosul guys, they may go, back, go in any way. Um, but another scenario, a nightmare scenario, is that if the Hashd al-Shabi decides uh, not necessarily adhere to what was agreed with Baghdad, and Hashd al-Watani oppose them, and both go inside Mosul, plus other forces uh, that in eventually or, or inevitably agreed to enter Mosul. So multi forces, all armed, uh, different loyalties, different command control structure, all entering the city, we are facing a danger that there may be uh, district by district control, uh, street by street rivalry, and there are no international forces, no uh, overwhelming uh, force that can actually provide that stability and control. Uh, in the absence of such guarantees, uh, local actors can shape events, mm -hmm. can force the hand of the regional actors, can force the hand of international actors. This area of unpredictability can uh, be a recipe for disaster. This is why going into Mosul prematurely without agreeing the political framework can actually be um, uh, disadvantageous, if not disastrous. In your analysis, is there a rush on the side of the Americans or about that government to, to carry out this operation as soon as possible without having a concrete scenario for the afterwards? The Americans have been criticized for, um, in a way, rushing uh, the liberation of Mosul. Some people think that that is linked to the internal agendas and the elections. But then, on the other hand, if you ask any Iraqi, say, when is the best time to liberate Mosul? There is no answer there. If you wait f uh, for the Iraqis to get their house in order, to get the, the Mosul communities to unite, you may be waiting forever. Uh, even the, with, with ISIS as the common enemy, even with the greatest incentives in the world for having their hometown liberated, yet 
up to the last minute, they are so fragmented and polarized, and they are not rising up to the responsibility. So how long can you wait? So the, this argument, counter-argument, there's no win between them. But uh, it is clear that uh, for the past two years, since Daesh appeared and took Mosul, there doesn't seem to be uh, a clear indication that lessons are learned and uh, Iraq is in a better place politically or Iraqi government and parliament are focused on dealing with post-ISIS Mosul. They are still engaged in the same political games and dynamics of two years ago, of five years ago, of ten years ago. So there is no prospect on, on that regard that we should not expect much from the central actors in Iraq, politicians, different, because they have different agendas. On the other hand, there were some arguments that the rush on the side of the United States is just to push Iraqi authorities or Iraqi figures to prepare themselves for this operation because, as you said, then we may learn, wait for a long time just to focus on this. And then, if do you see any kind of agreement among the regional players in terms of future of Mosul and future of Iraq? Uh, the, region, the, the two main regional powers that matter most to Mosul are Turkey and Iran. Uh, Turkey and Iran have um, compartmentalized their relations that uh, when it comes to direct bilateral uh, relations, they have good relations, they engage in terms of economy, trade, politics, visit, counter visit and so on. But when it comes to Iraq and Syria, they uh, seem to be at each other's uh, uh, rivalry. They are still working through sometimes allies on the ground or proxies and they are um, uh, not compromising and not even communicating uh, adequately. If you look at uh, Mosul as an example, there's Turkish army presence that Iraq and Iran do not like. And there, there are Hashta Shabi uh, that are, at least great part of them, are backed by Iran. They do not like Turkey. They do not like Turkish presence on the ground. They will not cooperate with the Turks. So as soon as Mosul is liberated milit militarily, um, that means uh, there, there could be Turkish-Iranian uh, friction uh, and, and direct or indirect rivalry expressing itself in Mosul. So what would be ideal is that uh, both regional powers need to engage Baghdad and Arbil and between them decide that this is their immediate neighborhood, their, their immediate, the territory that matters mo most to both countries and whatever happens in terms of uh, descent into chaos or stabilization would uh, eventually affect both countries whether it's bad or, or good. And from that one can learn that there will be a way of cooperation rather than competition, especially in a place, Iraq, that matters most to both countries. Lastly, you referred to a very negative scenario about the future of Mosul, different districts controlled by different groups and uh, fighting continue. How such a nightmare scenario will affect KRG and the future of KRG within Iraq? How Iraqi or Kurdish authorities in Iraq are ready for such a scenario? Okay. Well, Kurdistan region of Iraq, uh, the way it is currently its own entity, um, it has political problems, but in terms of security, it's stable. But the KRG has a special interest in Mosul and Nainawa Plain. Uh, first of all, Mosul itself uh, historically has had a large, a significant um, proportion of the population is Kurdish, something up to 40%, some think it's a quarter. But that is uh, uh, undoubted. Outside the city of Mosul, there are areas that uh, people describe as disputed territories. They range from the areas near Syrian border all the way into Shengal area and then Nainawa Plain, uh, all the way down to Mahmur and further to Kirkuk. All these are uh, territories that the Kurds have previously controlled in terms of providing security but administered via Baghdad. Now, it is in, in some ways reversed, uh, not reversed, but the Kurds are still providing both administration and security. So the KRG would be looking at the liberation of Mosul as another milestone to either agree uh, a political agreement that will forever, uh, 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 in a way, deal with this uh, disputed territory and agree a governance system inside Mosul that will be inclusive 
and uh, jointly managed in such a way that avoids uh, historical or uh, repetition of the past friction between uh, Arab Kurds, Sunnis, Shias, Turkmans, uh, Christians and Yazidis. Remember one thing, even those small communities in the Nainawa uh, uh, province are very polarized, very fragmented, torn between so many regional and local uh, powers that uh, the gap between them is widening and, the, and, and achieving reconciliation uh, uh, and peace and stability is becoming increasingly difficult. It is in the interest of KRG, as well as the Sunni population and the, the, the neighborhood, to get it right, to have a good governance, to stabilize, to uh, agree a win-win scenario. So KRG will be very much affected, but they would like to not lose out on this, but to be seen as one of the stakeholders who should be at the table uh, for the future uh, of Mosul. Thank you very much for your comments.